with an SMO all the way back to 2007. This is a junior short problem, 35. It was the last problem on the, on the test. And uh, so there's this condition. Um, find the largest integer, they call it cap n, such that both cap n plus 496 and cap n plus 224 are perfect squares. You know, this one falls definitely into the category of just directly translating. Uh, I just simply set both expressions equal to perfect squares or, or to squares. So something I did leave out right here is that uh, X and Y are uh, proud members of the natural numbers. Okay, and so this is supposed to be a fancy in here. Uh, I don't know if I did this right. But uh, this just says that X and Y are natural numbers, numbers like one, two, three, four. They're positive integers is what a lot of people like to call it. Some people call this uh, Z plus, I think. Okay, but in any event, um, we've just done what the problem asks us to do, which is to uh, impose the condition that N plus 496 is a square integer and N plus 224 is a square integer. Now, some nice things happen when you do that. You get to take advantage of, the, of this algebraic structure here. Uh, X squared minus Y squared, this well-known result difference of two squares would be equal to 496 minus 224. And you get 272 out of that. Now, it's kind of hard to see what's going on here, but I employed a method just called dumbassing. And I know that's in, in the absence of using some special result or some divisibility results of the integers, I just exhaustively went through all the uh, examples. And uh, I think it was Evan Chin and some other guys at, during SMO, they say that's a valid technique. If you, if you can't think of some cool result, just write it, exhaustively write down what's going on and see if you can draw some conclusion. So it is a valid approach. Now, if you, if you take a look right here at this, you can get some insight into how much work you're going to have to do by noticing that this is two to the four times uh, two to the first. And what this means is that there, you can ink, increment both of these uh, exponents. There, there, that means there's gonna be five times two divisor. And that's just a number, that's just a combinatorics result that's fairly easy to work out. So you're gonna have five times two equals 10. Um, and I should put the word divisors here, 10 divisors. When I say 10 divisors, I mean divisors of, of uh, this value 272. Okay, so there's 10, apologies folks, uh, 10 divisors, divisors of 272. 10 divisors or factors of uh, 272. And so you see, we just go through all of them. The part, I just did it in this order one, and set one times 272, the one and 272 are divisors, two, 136 are divisors, four, 68, and so on, all the way down to the very end. So we went through all 10 of the divisors and of course they occur in pairs. Now you can see what happened on this very first line. Uh, we just set the individual factors equal to the corresponding divisors of, of, of 272. Now, what does this mean though? This means, notice what happens if you add X plus Y equals one to x minus y equals 272, you get two x is equal to 273, okay? So that's just a, a, a convenient elimination because of the presence of this minus sign here. Now notice I put this in red letters because you see we need for x and y to be natural numbers or positive integers. And so this, this would in, imply that x is, is, a, is a rational number, right? x is equal to uh, uh, 273, over two, right, which is not, that's not a member of the, of the natural numbers, right, or we'll say, we'll call it Z plus, all right, Z plus. So you see, we definitely have to reject that. All right, but the rest of these are candidates. The rest of these are candidates. In a similar fashion, if you add X plus Y equals two and X minus Y, equals uh, 136, you can add equals to equals, right? You get two X equals to 138 and you get X equals 69. And you can already, you already know that you're more or less done because all these other cases get smaller and smaller values, right? 
And again, down here, we can't do this because you would have a, 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 it's an answer that's not a, a natural number, okay? And so uh, right here, you could kind of just, you know how the trend is going to go. You, you could see it's going to get smaller and smaller. So 69 is the largest value of X, but uh, we know that X squared is equal to uh, N plus 496. And after you do the arithmetic, you get this as your final answer, folks. 4265. 4265 is the largest uh, integer such that the conditions prevail. And you could have answered that what is the smallest one? And of course, that would correspond to this. You could ask two questions here, larger or smaller. The, back in 2007, they went for the larger one. Hope you enjoyed.